Um, so welcome everybody to uh, week two of our spring quarter lecture series in sustainability, entrepreneurship, and business. Um, I am very, very honored and happy to introduce our guest speaker um, this week. <clears throat> our guest spe speaker is Jenna Mason. Um, Jenna is an Evergreen alum. Um, Jenna graduated from the Evergreen State College with a Bachelor of Arts in Science in Environmental Journalism in December 2018. Half of her college career derives from the Pennsylvania State University, where she studied broadcast journalism. She's lived in Olympia, Washington for almost eight years. Jenna's been involved in the media field since she was a senior in high school. She uh, has experiences working in PBS studios, The Morning Call, um, as a photo and video lab assistant with Mount Rainier National Park and for local organizations such as the Thurston Climate Action Team, Olympia Community Solar, and South Sound Solar. Now with 12 years of photo and video production under her belt, she's providing video and photo services to her local community and beyond in order to help organizations and small businesses visualize their missions. And if, I'm stand, if I stand corrected, you are now the co-owner of Get Real LLC. So with that uh, impressive resume, <laughs> I will go ahead and hand it off to you. Thank you so much for joining us, Jenna. Cool. Thank you. I really appreciate that introduction. Um, I wore my evergreen sweatshirt special for this <laughs> it's an honor to be here um I feel really special that I got asked to do this it makes me feel good about what I'm doing because as I'll touch on later in my presentation imposter syndrome is real it's very real um <laughs> so thanks again to everybody for being here and for taking this time to listen to me and my story and how I got here and everything. And I love Evergreen. So it's an honor to be a part of this. I'll just hop right into telling you my story. I mean, this is going to be pretty informal, even though I have a PowerPoint. Um, I just kind of want to be a human with you all and just be relatable because I'm definitely not anything crazy special, but <laughs> I'm I'm happy with what I've accomplished. So Back in 2015, I decided to move across the country. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Um, I lived there my whole life. I was 20 years old. And I actually had a boyfriend at the time that went to Evergreen. And that's how I found out about it. I had visited before and I just fell in love. Um, I was at Penn State University and it got too expensive. And I honestly wasn't really enjoying it uh, for the price too. Um, it was a really big school and it just kind of had this sort of, you know, conventional aspect to it that, of course, is beneficial in a lot of cases. It really is. But it wasn't speaking to me. I, there was something in me itching to have something different. And so Evergreen, I would say, is a, a polar opposite in all the best ways. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, so I did the big move in 2015. Um me and my mom hugging goodbye. And then that's me, my first selfie or picture in Olympia. <laughs> Um, and, um, I didn't go to Evergreen right away. Uh, I, I really, really wanted to, I didn't want to take any gap, but I couldn't get in. Um, I moved in like new year's day of uh, 2015 and I couldn't get in right away or winter quarter was full and they were going to put me in spring. And then the financials kind of weren't working out. And so I decided to get residency first. So I took two years off of school to just like accustom to my new home and get to know Evergreen and visit it in the meantime. And um, so that's what I did. And I still had a camera by my side throughout all of that. I mean, I was in this new, wonderful, magical forest land. And so I was definitely still taking pictures and doing some video. Um, I was taking photos of like local bands because there were a lot of house shows and shows downtown and things like that. So that was always really fun. Um, but I'll jump to when I came to Evergreen. Um, I was super excited and Evergreen, like after becoming a resident and just seeing all the help financial aid I got at Evergreen, it was blowing my mind because I was like, wow, I only had to live here two years to get all this help. But my home state of Pennsylvania didn't help me this much. <laughs> so so it, it paid off. Um, yeah, so again, I don't have the four years experience at Evergreen. I kind of wish I did. I, um, but I think I made the the best out of what I had with the two, two and a half years that I was there. 
Um, so I did like my own, you know, customization of what programs I took. I actually never took a full year program. That's also something I kind of wish I did, but because I only had my two and a half years, I was like, I want to take as many programs as I can. So I kind of changed every quarter pretty much. Um, so yeah, I did a combination of environmental science studies and video production, which was the video was more on my own personal end. I would say I mostly studied environmental science at Evergreen. Um, so the middle picture there is me in Peter Impara's class. Um, I believe that was the conserving wildlife course. And we actually went to Yellowstone later that year. And that was so cool. I actually drove one of the vans all the way out there. So that was cool. Um, and so I guess my experience at Evergreen is just like so compact because of like how little time I had there. And then like so much happened. Uh, if you see the, I don't know if you can see the top right picture of me on that cliff side, that was taken at a field trip that I had the second week of spring quarter for a class called Hacking Human Nature. And that was with Brett Weinstein, which I know weird to bring up. But I was literally there during that whole fiasco in 2017 um, where there were protests and everything and it all went on the news. And so like, I mentioned that because like, whoa, it was just like really overwhelming, but I feel like I learned so much and it, it strangely became part of my education to go through that because I had my video camera in my hands and I was challenged in like the ethics and morals of what the power of a camera can really have because I wanted to document what was going on but then I felt like maybe I shouldn't or and then I put some things on YouTube as like a general um, representation of like one of the meetings we had as a campus and it got a lot of views but then it was getting some really intense comments on it and then I like deleted the comments and then people were like you shouldn't be deleting comments and I was like ah and then I just took it off but um, weirdly it just became something that I had to reflect on for many reasons. Um, and so that was a big part of my education that spring. Um, that was a big, big deal and a big change at Evergreen too. Um, but I would say that really kind of shifted things for me as well as Evergreen where it made me stop and go, you know, I really want to think harder about what's being said or how things are represented and you know, all those kinds of things. And so that started opening my mind to, you know, not only having environmental science teach and show me how we need to be treating our planet better, but it also teaches me about how we can treat each other better and how, how we treat each other also kind of adds back into environmental science. And that's what I love about Evergreen is that interdisciplinary education um, that's kind of how my brain has always worked. I've always kind of felt and thought in that way. And so it was so cool to come to a school that met that and matched that. And it gave me this like freedom to be myself and, and feel okay with suggesting something or asking certain questions or thinking in these very strange or abstract ways. And, and they were seen as valid and that to me was the huge difference between my old college and this one. Um, and, and then that started shaping me as an individual. Um, so uh, the, pic the goofy picture of me with the glasses, I worked at Photoland when I was at Evergreen. So that was one of the, the portraits they hang up. <laughs> I loved working at Photoland. Um, so I was always keeping like video photo kind of next to me as I studied environmental science. The bottom right picture, I had a side job at, um, it was actually with Three Degrees. Um, they're a B corporation that partners with electric utilities around the country, and they offer this green power program. So I was going door to door, um, asking people to pay a little extra on their electric bill for renewable energy. Um, but yeah, so it was just like this, I was in this landscape of like, wow, Evergreen, Olympia, like there's so much more environmental awareness going on and that really like matched with my heart I just I wanted to be somewhere where like who I am deep down who I was still discovering could be externally validated a little bit and and that was really cool um and then towards the end of my time at Evergreen over the summer I took a summer um ILC that was my first ILC in 2018 so I was on my way out 
ILCs were really cool because that's where I was coming to the end of my studies. And I was like, well, it would be really cool to customize the things I've learned with environmental science and with video production. And so I did a little study on the prison industrial complex um, because I don't know, I guess I've just naturally been really attracted to the voices that go unheard, um, the people that really need some more help and are often stigmatized against so that they don't get that help. And there's, you know, mainstream media, I learned very quickly was not something I wanted to be a part of, which is kind of why I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> um, and I know that they kind of control a lot of what we see in here. And I didn't want to feed into that. Um, and, and then, you know, naturally learning about people and places and things that like need more of a truth being told, need more of a raw story being told. I was like, I want to, I want to help do that. So um, that's kind of what I was starting to learn with this uh, prison industrial complex study I did. And then um, I was trying to, uh, I was originally going to be creating a video for the sustainability in prisons project, um, which they were a really great connection. I didn't end up actually doing a video for them, but I was able to interview two people that um, went to Evergreen who were previously incarcerated and were a part of that program. And I interviewed them on camera and that was really eye-opening. Um, and so the top two pictures, uh, the one me like looking at the camera, um, that was during my, I did, I continued the ILC into fall and winter. Um, and I was trying to create like a video about included with those interviews I did. And that was inspired by this documentary I watched during my ILC, which was called The Prison in 12 Landscapes. And it was really opening your eyes to like how prisons are not just internal, but they have an external influence and they have this meaning like, um, it, it's kind of like the, the meaning of like the control and the, and like all that is you can kind of find evidence of it outside of prisons as well. And that was, that really, influenced me too where I was I was just going through a lot at Evergreen where I was just rethinking everything that I was conditioned to think you know and that <laughs> it can be like whoa but then it was also just like yeah I need to know this like to me is it became part of this is what I need to know and do is if I'm going to be alive on this planet I feel like I should learn about these things I feel like I should challenge myself and what I've been told and taught and I love that Evergreen is just that perfect place to be able to do that um so yeah, and then I, yeah, I continued on. Um, I actually met a prisoner that was at um, Stafford Creek Correction Center who I developed like a pen pal relationship with. And um, I volunteered for a second with them to create a website for um, prisoner voices and artwork. So it was called Liberation Media Northwest and um, we uh, post like artwork on there and eventually they got a podcast. I'm not a part of the group anymore just because I got too busy as an entrepreneur. <laughs> um, but uh, that was really rewarding because it just felt like immediately my work at Evergreen and things I learned there bled into the real world pretty immediately. And I, it was just a really cool experience. Um, and so that is kind of what leads me to life after Evergreen. Um, I met a lot of cool people there. Um, and actually uh, Mason Rolf, he's the president of Olympia Community Solar in that one picture. I met him at Evergreen. And right after I graduated, um, he asked me to, well, I was actually volunteering with them to help make videos and do pictures for them because they knew that's what I did. And then eventually they got enough funding where they hired me on part-time as an outreach and media specialist. So part-time I worked for them. And then the other part-time I did my business, which I started that year, uh, June, 2019. I officially became an LLC because um, I was naturally getting business through the people I was meeting. So these are a lot of like the initial um, nonprofits and companies that I got in touch with, like League of Women Voters of Thurston County uh, heard of me. Um, also, Olympia Community Solar was a really good connection. They, I knew people through there too. 
and they asked the League of Women Voters asked me to film their water forums downtown because they really wanted those recorded. It was like called Where is the Water, I think. And yeah, and then naturally I met people at Capital Home Care Cooperative and, and then Thurston Climate Action Team. I was filming um, the, they had these talks at Traditions Cafe where they had county commissioners, commissioners come and talk about climate change in, the lo in our local area and things like that. That was cool. I eventually started making stuff for South Sound Solar. I met Earth Homes and Build a Bus Home. And that it just kind of all went hand in hand with, and it just started developing my mission as a media person. I was like, I want to document the game changers. I want to document the people that are doing the actual good work, the people that know we need to change, the people that are aware enough that the things that we were initially taught or you know the some of the conventional things like they can harm people they're not good and we need to like wake up to that and see a way that we can make that change even just locally and so I was like well I want media to be focused on that I want I want more people to know about this stuff that's going on and the people that are trying to make a change because you know it can get pretty daunting sometimes if you uh focus too much on the horrible things that are happening but um it's always good to know that there's people that are still trying to make an impact and a change. And I also was uh, pretty transformed when I uh, discovered the group Protectors of the Salish Sea. It's that photo on the top. Um, how did I meet them? I think I knew them through a friend and they were declaring climate emergency and protesting but you you could say they were praying at the capitol and I went there to provide media support I just volunteered um but I wanted to provide media support and I ended up making them a video for free but I, I just wanted to support um I made them a video to help get the word out about the efforts they were doing and they did this prayer walk from Tacoma they walked 46 miles from Tacoma to the capitol and then posted up there to ask Jay Inslee to declare climate emergency. And um, that was all really eye-opening because then I got to learn more about indigenous peoples and the way that they live and the way that they think about our planet and our, our current climate and us and just the way that they speak, the way that they share messages like this. And that was eye-opening. I actually slept on the grass of the Capitol building because they wanted to occupy, they wanted to keep a presence the whole time. And that was, yeah, that was just really moving. Um, and I'm glad I was able to make a video for that. Um, and that was really cool. But um, that's where, I don't know, like having your own business, it's like, I learned through this already that like, even though my name is Jenna Mason Media, I was like, I feel like having your own business, you're, who you are is going to naturally come through. And I think that's a good thing. Like, I think that's important to keep the drive going and to be authentically you and not feel like you have to put on this face or like look like everybody else. Cause I feel like that's maybe some of the conditioning, you know, we went through of like professionalism and all that. Like, of course it's good to be professional and that's important, but I also think it's so rewarding and, and more efficient that if you feel like you can show up as you and like show the things that you care about and kind of have that be a part of your work because that'll keep you going too. That like at the end of the day, this is me and this is what I care about. So, you know, I don't think I'll ever hate my job <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so, and there's so much, there's so many cool people here in this area from Evergreen and everything that are trying to do, trying to make change. And that's really like what gets me going um, to keep doing this. Um, and so uh, these were some of my videos that caught some cool attention. So um, this is how it kind of started showing me that, oh, what I do matters or, oh, what I do is working. Okay. Cause like, man, I question myself still <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Um, so the top left was a video I made last year for Homes First. They're a local nonprofit um, and they provide uh, housing for low income people and they act as the landlord, which is really cool. They're like probably the best landlord out there. Um, so I made a video that uh, is for their annual fundraising event. 
And so there was a local premiere of that last year. And that was like, just felt like a huge accomplishment to just be in a room full of all these people and see the video play. And they were bringing out their checkbooks to donate to Homes First. I was like, yes. So that was cool. Um, the top right is a video I made for Build a Bus Home. They're a local nonprofit. Um, you might have, I, I'm, I wonder if you've heard about their shower trailer for the homeless. Um, they made a shower trailer for people to come and take showers and get some new shoes, some clothes, things like that. So I did a highlight video for them. So it has 2.5K views. It's like my highest viewed video. So that's pretty cool. Um, the bottom left is the my first and only uh, official short documentary. I made a documentary for Olympia Community Solar for their first community solar project that they installed on top of the Hands-On Children's Museum. And that was really rewarding because I had worked for them for two years. And then I, I actually quit in June of 2020, which is crazy during the pandemic. But I was realizing that my business was kind of growing and I would like to spend more time on the business. So that was a really cool shift. But they would still uh, contract with me for media services. It was like, sweet. Um, so I made this documentary uh, and that was really fun. I got to use my drone and like document the installation of the solar panels on the roof and everything and kind of just talk about the story of who they are, why they care about this um, and what impact this has on our community, like the symbolism of it. Um, and then the bottom right was a video I made for the League of Women Voters. Um, so that's where like a lot of these initial connections I made at Evergreen and how it spread out from there um, ended up paying off where they became clients for me, which was really cool. Um, so I made a how, how to vote video for the League of Women Voters because they felt like they wanted people to just know how to vote. And so we made a fun skit that um, is a little quirky, but <laughs> it's, it's a, a lighthearted way of showing people how to vote, especially around here. It's pretty easy the way you can just mail it in. I love that. Um, and then the middle no. picture oh, is um, last year, I luckily got nominated for Best of South Sound and I won the third place for photographer, which was cool. Um, that was awesome. So these are like those little wins that I sometimes forget to celebrate, <laughs> but I know I need to do that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so like after all this, um, you know, it was really clear to me that I'm like, I love doing this, but it's really hard. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and I think that's my next slide. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so this is a big one. I already mentioned it. Uh, I still struggle with this and I'm sure folks can relate. Um, this can happen to all of us with anything. Uh, yeah. So the videography industry is very male dominated. And so like, I think that adds to me having imposter syndrome because like if I look online or look to other companies, it's often all these dudes and like nothing wrong with dudes. I just mean like it can be kind of daunting um, and also like uh, access to like super high quality equipment. Like I don't have the best equipment in the world. And so sometimes I judge myself for that. Like, well, if you don't have that fancy camera that that guy has, are you really a real business? <laughs> it's like these kinds of thoughts, right? Um, and that goes with like the struggle of financial instability. So like, this is also a real part of this. Um, I've often had to have part-time jobs alongside of this. And I actually have one right now. I teach, um, it's actually a really cool one. I teach part-time in Tacoma uh, at Idea High School. And I teach juniors and seniors um, intro to video production. Um, so that's really super rewarding that I'm even uh, qualified to do that because that's where the imposter syndrome comes back in where I'm like, you guys want me to come teach your high schoolers? What? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> but it's working out. They're going to make a short film soon. But financial instability is definitely a thing. And But it's not. there's nothing wrong with having a part-time job on the side. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. It's just It's just tough because you're spreading your attention in two or three different ways. Um, so that's still something I'm working on. And like Olympia is like an amazing playground of like people and, and organizations and small businesses that you can meet 
Um, but sometimes it's, it's not that it's too small, it's not, but there's sometimes where it's like, oh, I might have to reach into Tacoma or other places to kind of get more of a flow going on. So that's like still something I'm figuring out. Um, and that's the other thing with all of this. Obviously, I didn't go to school for business. I have been learning as I go. I really have. And as hard as it is, I do recommend it because believe it or not, you can do it. You can make it work. Um, you don't have to know everything. And I, I'm kind of a perfectionist and feel like I need to know everything, but I don't. And somehow I've still made it <laughs> to today. And, but um, I know that I have the skills and the passion and it's there and I, I need to keep listening to that. And that's where the other struggle goes into mental health too. Like, so this kind of goes back into the fact that like, you really learn a lot about yourself as an entrepreneur because you kind of have to, you kind of, because like everything is up to you and that is so daunting sometimes um, that you're the one making your own income pretty much. You're the one that has to advertise yourself. You have to make your marketing. You have to, you know, reach out to clients, keep up on your emails, make your website, like do all this stuff, um, which I, I actually enjoy doing all of that, but I'm like, whoa, like it, it can really uh, weigh on you. And that's, it was starting to get to me a little bit, like doing all this by myself. Um, it depends on your field, of course, but like, I think doing all of it by yourself can be rewarding. It's very rewarding, but then at some point, you know, it can get a little, a little tough, but taking care of your mental health and like constantly reflecting on yourself and seeing like, it, I think it, being an entrepreneur really can reveal your the things you need to work on, like mine, <laughs> time management, self-discipline, um, those kinds of things. Because especially on days where I am just doing my business from home, like I have to be disciplined and like waking up at a certain time and staying focused all day. Because if I don't do that, I'm going to lose some, like lose track and all that. So um, yeah, I just, I thought that these three slides just kind of highlight some of the realities of it that like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's all peachy and like I have everything figured out and nope, but I am blessed and lucky that I'm still able to do this and um, yeah, and that it's, it's working so far, but that's where it comes to me and Michael. I realized that I um, didn't really want to do it alone anymore. Um, and I was doing it for like three and a half years as Jenna Mason Media and Jenna Mason Media still exists, but now I've partnered officially with my friend Michael as Get Real LLC. And Michael's had, he's has experience with photography and color and he's done some video as well. And Michael was always this guy. I actually met him through a friend that I was doing video for. Um, and he's like, hey, I do video too. Like we should work together sometime. And he was just always showing up in my life. Just always like, hey, I'm here. I can help. And I was like, wow, that's actually really valuable. I have this person that keeps saying, hey, I want to help you. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we worked on a couple projects together and it worked out really well. And so now we're officially um, an LLC together, which is great because I feel like this refreshed state now where I'm like, okay, it's not just all up to me anymore. But um, what's cool about Michael too is he sees what I've been doing and he loves the mission that I've been dedicated to. And so now it's like our mission. It's He cares about documenting the folks that are doing good work. Um, and so it's just a really nice partnership to be working with somebody who feels the same way as you about our local community. He's actually lived here longer than me. So that's cool. Um, and yeah. So I'm really happy about this and I'm really excited for what's next with it. Um, and I think I covered everything I was going to talk about. <laughs> um, did I go, is, is, I probably went pretty fast there. Oh, you're, you're good. Um, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you so much for, um, for taking us through your journey and your work in particular. Um, so a, 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 a brief moment of appreciation from everyone. Thank you so much. Nice. Um, I think at this point, maybe we open the floor for questions, comments. I know I've got some questions, but I'll um, open it to everyone else first. Sure.
Yeah. Um, so that was back in June of 2020 when I uh, stopped working for Olympia Community Solar as a part-time uh, contractor with them. And then, yeah, I just went full into my business. Um, so, yeah, so I had that part-time job alongside until June of 2020, and then I dropped it. And so I was just my business. But that didn't, that only lasted probably about a year, which was pretty cool to have done my business only for a year. That was really eye opening. Um, but then it got back to a point where I had to get another part time job. Um, so it kind of like ebbs and flows. But the goal again is to get to another point where I don't need a part time job again. Yeah, I would say picking something where you feel like you can really authentically be who you are and where that won't get compromised as much as you can tell and just something you can imagine yourself doing for a while where you know, you, we would hope you get paid, but whether you would get paid for it or not, you still care to do it. I would say that kind of reveals that um because that's kind of how I felt with video like I've done a lot of free videos for people um just because I love it I love editing and putting it together and then seeing someone's reaction when they get it um but yeah that, that would be my answer for that just something that you can you would do regardless of getting paid so it looks like we've got a couple of other questions in the chat uh first question how much do you work Per day on average would you say yeah oh yeah i didn't even talk about that stuff um so on average if i'm dedicating a whole day to my business which i usually do tuesdays wednesdays and fridays because i teach mondays and thursday mornings right now um i i've been spending lately with michael like nine to five roughly but it doesn't feel the same like because it's it's really cool when it's all up to you guys. Like you don't have a boss, you know, and that's, that's really cool. That's where the self-discipline comes in, but like it, that's something else I've, um, am dedicated to. And that I think Evergreen also helped teach me was just alternative lifestyles, um, living your own life the way that you want to live versus the life that you're told to live and how to live it. Like all those pressures, like, I know we all need to make money and we have bills to pay. And like, that's just a necessity we have to do. But I love being an entrepreneur because there's days I wake up and mentally I'm not there or I need a, you know, I need a break or I need a day off and I can do that with, I mean, I still have guilt. I still have guilt, but I can do that. And I don't, I'm like, I'm not on the verge of losing my job. Like, God forbid you take a day or two off every now and then it's like, I feel bad because some people, you know, I know that that's a real thing, but it's just, it's nice to, um, be a little bit more in charge of your life. And I feel like we all deserve that. And I, I want that for everybody. Um, so that's kind of where that kind of leads to as well. So nine to five roughly, but there's some days I only work six hours or four hours. It kind of ebbs and flows with whatever is on the plate. Uh, next question, the chat. Did you learn valuable things in your part-time jobs? Oh yeah, yeah. I really did. Um, that's a great question, uh, especially at Olympia Community Solar. I mean, I give them a lot of credit for a lot of the connections I have even to this day. I because they naturally met a lot of people because they're a nonprofit and getting community solar around the whole area. Um, so I got to meet people through there, and that was super rewarding. And then I was a part of something that is environmentally related and something I care about too. Um, and then I. And all of my part-time jobs, I get to learn how important a team is. And that's, um, I had a part-time job last year in Tacoma at a media company for like seven months. And I got to see their media team and it was just really eye-opening. I was like, you know what? I really want a team someday. Like, I I don't think I want to be alone. <laughs> it's just me all the time. So that really showed me that. And then I got to learn from some of the other camera operators there and editors and kind of get to like bounce ideas off of them. And that is really cool to do too, is to just like 
be able to talk with other people that are in your field. So I think that's really rewarding and important. And now I'm a teacher, part-time adjunct teacher, and that still still blows my mind because I didn't go to school for teaching. Um, <laughs> and they kind of just threw me in there and they're like, good luck. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm teaching high schoolers now. I feel like high school was yesterday, but okay. Um, that's so rewarding though. These These kids are like, really funny and creative and they're about to make their first short films and I'm just so excited that I get to lead them into that and that working with younger people like I didn't I don't have a lot of experience with it because I'm the younger sibling um but now that I'm working with juniors and seniors I'm like wow this is so cool so I I think um having even though it can be inconvenient to have to go do a part-time job while you're trying to build your business if you can find something that is related to your business that just makes it even cooler because then you're like oh I'm still working on my business even by working here so cool thank you um a little bit more of a logistical question what software do you use to schedule bookkeep advertise yeah, so I have, or we, I should say we now, me and Michael, we have a website with Wix and Wix um, has a lot of cool stuff to it. Um, you can have your email set up through there. You can do email newsletters through there. They have all their price quotes and invoicing functions on there for the, all that stuff. Um, by myself, I was bookkeeping just through Google Sheets, like an Excel spreadsheet, but me and Michael are going to be using QuickBooks very soon. Um, so that's something we'll be doing. And that, was that all of those that were asked? Um, schedule, bookkeep, advertise. Yeah. Yeah. And then social media is a huge one for advertising, um, especially because for our field with video and photo, it's all visual. So Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, like those are all key things to be like, this is what we do. Hey, check us out. And using the hashtags and things like that. And luckily I'm, I'm, I love making that kind of stuff and posting it and everything. So, and Michael too. So it kind of comes natural to us to just like put that out there, but I'm sure at some point we're going to need to hire like a social media manager and stuff. Cause we can't do everything, <laughs> but yeah. I have multiple questions and I'm trying to debate which one to start mm -hmm. with. Um, I think I'll start with this one. So, you know, you, you sort of spoke about when you were at Evergreen and like in your studies, you didn't really study business and you've had to learn a lot on the way. And I'm wondering if there are any like key resources that you have found to learn about business tax law or, um, you know, anything else that's sort of related to the business side of things since graduating from Evergreen that you would recommend to anyone else here? Oh, um, well, I've, I'll first say that I learned a lot just by Googling and researching, but I'll, I'll be clear about logistically, it doesn't take too much to start an LLC. Um, you go on like the Washington Secretary of State website to apply uh, for your LLC. Um, and I think you, you still have, you have to pay $200 uh, as like a startup fee. Um, you have to get your business license. Um, and that costs about $60, I believe for us. And, um, your EIN number is free. Don't ever go on, um, a website that tries to charge you for your tax EIN number. That's like your and so if you don't want to use your social security number for tax purposes, you use the EIN uh, so that like it's for your business entity. So it separates you from your business. Um, but I fell for this weird scam that charged me money for the EIN, but the EIN is free. You go on the IRS website and it's free. So I just want to clear that up for people <laughs> to see. I found out some things the hard way just by trial and error. But um, I will say I did take advantage of a resource. Um, I think it's Enterprise for Equity. And it's at the, um, I went to the South Puget Sound Lacey campus and they had a section in there for businesses, but especially for women in business, I identify as a woman. And so I went there and they had some free resources. I had like a free consultation with a business advisor and she helped walk me through some of these things too. Um, some of them I had already looked up, but she kind of like clarified some things for me. So if you don't even want to have to go down the Google black hole <laughs> you can go to a free business advisor which is super uh helpful 
And then I think that that same um, place helped me connect with something called the W Marketplace. And I applied for a scholarship through them um, and I got it. And so the W Marketplace is this online marketplace for women owned businesses. And I got to put my business on this marketplace for free because I got the scholarship and then they became a really cool resource. And I actually ended up making two videos for them. So they became one of my clients as well. And that was like super cool. Um, so I recommend um, that resource as well. Um, yeah, I would say those were probably, and then just, yeah, networking and talking to people and learning more about the organizations and things around town. There's a lot of people here doing some good stuff. Awesome. Uh, another question, is it costly to hire a bookkeeper or do you save a lot by doing them yourself? You know, that's a really good question. I definitely have not hired a bookkeeper yet. Um, I've done it all myself because still currently there's not a ton of like in and out going on. Like everything's still pretty trackable by yourself, but I know that me and Michael will probably have to do that um, at some point. So of course it's cheaper to do it yourself, but um, yeah, I'm actually not sure how much it costs yet. <laughs> <laughs> to hire one. Um, I'm sure it's not anything crazy because I know that a lot of businesses have them. So yeah. And are they, I've got another question that I'm gonna pause for anyone else first. Love all these questions, by the way. Thank you. I love being asked questions. <laughs> all right, I'll ask. Um, you kind of spoke about this. So I'm wondering if you could maybe expand a little bit more about um you know, being part of such a strong local economy here in Olympia, um, which I think is not so much maybe now slash into the future, but has been a rarity, right? That's that those that concept of a strong local economy. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, um, you know, what the power of that has been in building your connection to place here um, in Olympia and, you know, like you've been talking about um, making a living um, and surviving, you know, paying those bills, et cetera. Yeah. Um, well, I would say that that's a big part of why I feel like I can even do what I'm doing. Um, I'm not gonna say that it's not possible in my hometown in Pennsylvania. Well, I wouldn't necessarily be in my hometown, but either way, um, I'm sure I could do this over there too. But I will say that I think Olympia is very unique with how much people are community oriented. And I think that speaks to all of our hearts, definitely speaks to mine and what I want to do. And I, it's like the people believed in me enough to want to hire me, you know, for the, for, to document their nonprofit or, or be the one that helps them get their voice out there about a, like an act, a call to action or something that they're a part of. And I would say that's, yeah, that's just so special about Olympia is like people give you a chance to be yourself and they're supportive. They want to invest in, especially evergreeners. They want to invest in the young people that are trying, the young people that are putting themselves out there. They can see that and they want to support that instead of like judging you for not being professional enough for like top tier you know there's like none of that it just like and I think that in itself has helped me grow and stay and stay in this because I'm like oh wow like these people are giving me a chance to to do this and they believe in me and they support me and so that um yeah that's just really rewarding and I, honestly I will say most of my business has been word of mouth I have barely had to advertise myself which is such a gift. Um, it often is just like this person knows this person and they mention me or they show them the video I made and then they talk about, and then they come to me and say, hey, I saw that video you made for so-and-so, whoa. And so that's just been a really cool thing too, to not really have to push a lot of marketing because um, that's just how strong this community is and how interwoven everything is. So. I love that. And I really, really appreciate you saying that, um, you know, I didn't go to Evergreen. I came to Evergreen as a faculty member three years ago. 
And I've really been blown away by the closeness of the of particularly the greener community. And I think it's also a rarity nowadays to have so many greeners stay or so many college slash university students stay in the area in which they went to, to college and university. You know, I came from a very large like R1 institution, Arizona State University. And, you know, back then it was like <laughs> three years ago, but back then, and I'm sure it's the same, um, they really struggled with retaining people in the community um, that they are. And it is a really close knit community. Community. I mean, you know, Aaron Sauroff of, of Earth Homes. I was at a uh, an event this Wednesday, this um, this week, and he was the keynote speaker for the Thurston County um, Green Business Awards event. And I'm hoping to get him in uh, this quarter to talk about his work in sort of sustainable design and architecture. Um, and, you know, I've been in, in con conversations with Mason over at Oli Soul. So um, I just, you know, I just want to share with all the students here, if, you know, if you're new to Evergreen, particularly, um, it's a it's a very special community. Um, and like I said, the closeness and the support of the greener community is is pretty incredible. I mean, you could walk into almost every any location or business downtown organization downtown and I can guarantee you there's it's either owned by a greener or someone knows a greener or some a greener works there etc it's it's <laughs> pretty, pretty cool um so I appreciate you you saying that um I'm just gonna check if there's I've got another question but okay another question in the chat um do you edit with video filters <laughs> that make people look 20 years younger like TikTok? <laughs> Question, no, <laughs> um, we're called get real for a reason. You gotta be real. <laughs> um, no, um, I can do that a little bit with Photoshop. I can do that with photo editing, but, um, but we do care a lot about color and lighting to make you look good. Um, that's definitely important. <laughs> And on that same note for students in the class and for you, Jenna, if you're interested, um, last quarter we had Emily Wilder from Salinity Seafood and More who came to talk to us about sustainable marketing. In particular, she shared some, um, some readings around um, media and what it means by what we say sustainable marketing. No, we're not just talking about the ecological aspects, but we're thinking about the social aspects too. You know, she said she had a really powerful um, article on fat phobia in the media and what that, you know, what that impact has throughout our society. So um, I appreciate yeah. the question and the answer um, to that. Um, I had a question around you, you mentioned, and um, I will admit that I struggle with these two things as well, among many other things, um, struggling with, with um, being your own boss, working from home at times and things like time management and productivity. I'm wondering if there are any specific tools you've found that have been super helpful in managing those things. Ooh, yes, great question. Um, another perk of, you know, working for yourself, you can take dance breaks. You can take a walk outside. Like, oh my God, like so revolutionary. Like, how dare you leave this building? Like, <laughs> um, so those are, you know, everyone to each their own, like listen to what feeds you and like take that little break. I've heard tips of every 50 minutes, get up, especially if you're at the computer. I'm getting a little bit of a neck hump, but that's all right. Um, get up every 50 minutes and stretch, like, you know, just stand up, things like that. But on a more uh, organizational aspect, I have it right here. This is, I've had a passion planner and I, I'm not, this is not an ad. Um, I have, I've had a passion planner for like the last three years, four years. This thing is amazing. I mean, they're like 60 bucks. So it's, you know, a little pricey, but um, what I love about it is it's, it's for your whole life. It's not just business, but like you make like a, a timeline of like goals you want to reach and you can like put the deadlines that you have for them into your planner and then there's like um you have your like calendar view uh and it has over here like this month's focus people to see places to go things to learn and then it has personal projects and then work projects and then it has your like weekly breakdown so you have like i i love this is just part of my personality like you can literally plan to every half hour of the day you can write your focus at the top um good things that happened this week and then you're like to-do lists and this is just like your notes over here um so I just found that this was like really motivating and I I've been testing 
like having an experiment with myself for a while that like when I fill it out I my brain remembers it'll be like oh I wrote this thing down for 10 a.m I, I I should probably do that but when I don't fill it out I'm just like ah day is all up to me it doesn't matter <laughs> so that helps <laughs> awesome thank you um I think we have time maybe for one more question if folks have it those were all the questions that I had um, does anyone else have any questions for Jenna while we have her here? I guess I've got one one more short. Were any words of wisdom um, that you can share with our students? <laughs> Other than the last 56 minutes worth of wisdom. <laughs> words of wisdom. Hmm. Um, I would say that like, it it is really important to take care of yourself no matter what you're doing um like it's okay to prioritize that because i think that we all have been conditioned to put ourselves on the back burner um i myself am a people pleaser a recovering people pleaser and uh i'm i'm still learning or relearning how to show up for myself and that just like literally bleeds into everything we do the way we interact with people the things we sign up to do the, our work and like it's I, I it's okay to take breaks it's okay to like say I can't do this today or I can't go to that thing um and it's okay to go to the things that you're like well I like that you might not like that but I'm gonna go and do that like fill up your own cup kind of thing um it's not always easy and it's not always streamlined but I think that feeds into self-confidence as well to show up for what you're passionate about and to show up for you. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, we're the ones stuck with us. <laughs> we have to take, we, we take care of ourselves the best. Nobody else knows what's best for us, even though I tend to want people to know what's best for me, like help me. But, um, <laughs> but then I'm like, that's what the business teaches me. No, Jenna, it is kind of all up to you, which is very overwhelming, but also weirdly a blessing to be like, well, actually, I can decide how I react to this. I can decide what is and isn't okay for me. Um, still a work in progress, but definitely uh, I encourage that for everybody. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much. And I can guarantee you, you go to any business, most business schools, any MBA programs, and they won't teach you that. They'll they'll just say you gotta grind, you gotta monetize your hobby. The grind, you gotta, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta pro, you know, build those profits. Um, but I think you know, mm. most most important message right there. So I, I appreciate that. Um, mm. All right. Uh, well, uh, Jenna, thank you so much for joining us, um, students. Stick stick around because we've got a second half of our class today. But first, if we can have snaps, claps, and cheers for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. I really, thanks for listening to all this. And uh, I really appreciate you being here. <laughs>